Fat Guy Flies RC here, coming to you from the man cave. Yeah, I know, another plane, right? Yeah, yeah. I got problems. Hey, um, this time it's the X Fly Alpha Jet. I got the. Well, hopefully they sent me the right one. I got the red, white, and blue one. It's the French. It's their aerobatic team, kind of like our Thunderbirds or, or, or Blue Angels. I um, just talk, took it out of its uh, cardboard coffin, and the first time I've opened it, yeah, it's the blue one. They sent the right one. And we're going to take it out of the graphic box here, and we'll go over everything that comes inside. All right. Good grip on it. Slide it off. Sometimes with these planes, it's good to open one end so that it'll uh, let go. But this one seems to be okay. It seems like you can open up one end and be all right. This is surprisingly heavy. This is going to be a, a heavy plane, but then again, it's got a lot to it. Um, as you can see, it comes completely sealed in its uh, styrofoam coffin. There were some uh, bruises and, and uh, damage to the outside of the box, but I don't think uh, that that translated into the plane itself. At least it doesn't appear on the first look. Let's go over some of the specs on the plane from the outside of the box. Um, of course, made of EPO foam. It has a 970 millimeter um, or 38.2 inch wingspan. It's 49.2 inches long. It, um, I don't know if this is with the uh, battery, but 134 grams. Usually the, when they give you the weight, it's with the suggested battery, okay? Um, okay, I'm sorry. That's the wing loading. The flying weight, that's, that would be with the suggested battery, is 2,850 grams. A fairly heavy plane. 80 millimeter 12 blade fan. It has a 3280 um, with a KV 2200 brushless in runner motor. So she's going to be very efficient. Probably get four or five minutes of flight time with the throttle management. 100 amp ESC with a 7 amp UBEC. Um, center of gravity is going to be 155 millimeters from the leading edge. So maybe about that far in from the leading edge. Nine. Uh, Flying duration, five minutes. The recommended battery is a 6S, 4,000 to 5,000. Build should take less than 20 minutes. Flying, you know, do five minutes. It's got uh, five nine gram digital servos, three 13 gram digital servos, and one 25 digital uh, servo. Uh, re retracts with shock absorbing gear. And I've seen in several videos the, the shock, the, the the gear look pretty wide, so it should should handle do a lot of good uh, hand, uh, ground handling. It's got six LEDs, so you're going to light and bright. You know, six channel receivers, all you need. Skill level skill level is suggested to be intermediate. Okay, so you know, all all things considered, hopefully I'll do okay flying her. All right, let's take her out of her styrofoam. And uh, whenever you open these things, take kind of pay attention to where the parts are. Don't just start slicing in. You know, kind of look at it because you don't know how deep the styrofoam goes versus where you're cutting. And you might be cutting your model. You might be cut your model. Yeah, I got me some education. <laughs> yeah, might be cut your model. Okay, I like that. All right, let's. Uh, Take this piece off here and drop a box there. Looks like we're going to be taking our wing halves out first. Very nice, bright, and, and with it, just like with all the X Fly, all oh, you got to attach your flaps. That's fine. Ball link, the ailerons are already attached. For quick link, uh, quick connects, just like on the uh, J65 uh, uh, business jet which I really need to start flying that again. Um, looks like a pinch hinch, pinch hinch, a pinch 
um, hinge on the flap, but there looks like there's, yeah, there's some nile or uh, looks like uh, laminate down there to reinforce that. So I, of course, will do my usual um, beacon, hold the foam, basically Elmer's glue on steroid, uh, paint some of that in there. I'll do that on all of my control services, unless they have mechanical hinges. Oh, now looky here. The uh, aileron has mechanical hinges. I don't like dry moving my servos, but I wanted to take a look at that. Yeah, mechanical hinge, very, very nice. So it looks like, the, at least on the wings, that's the only part I'm going to have to mechanically, or I'm going to have to reinforce, is just the flap. The, uh, you have mechanical nylon hinges. Looks like you're going to have uh, one, two, you got three hard hinges, mechanical hinges in your ailerons on each wing. Perfect job. Reinforcements um, into metal. You're going to take your metal screws and you're going to metal screw in your wings. So that's awesome. Again, be careful as you take your pieces of styrofoam out. Pay attention to what you're doing. Um, looks like the rudder is a, the, the, oh, this rudder, the entire surface of this rudder, except for this little white here, is all covered in a sticker. So you don't have to worry about that foam getting deteriorated. I mean, it's going to be protected. And uh, to show you, you have a pinch hinge. Pay attention right through here. That runs the length of the rudder, but the whole thing. So I'll be reinforcing that with my little glue thing. Plastic doubler there. Okay. This should lift right out there. Just throw your foam everywhere, man. There. All right. Horizontal stabilizers. Yeah, this has full floating stabilizer. The whole thing moves. Has a nice piece of um, fiberglass spar or a carbon fiber spar in the metal. So that whole thing's going to move. So no need for a hinge there. Don't worry about a hinge there. Here we've got, this is the belly tank that just slides right in. Somewhere, oh, here's the first thing I'm going to gripe about. The manual. Ryan Phillips, you're going to be mad also. The manual was just folded in there. They could have laid it on top between those two pieces, but no, they didn't. Um, looks like... Oh, they even give you, you got your standard, your piece of uh, Velcro, nice zip lock bag to hold your manual in, okay, and you've got, oh, I mean, more like an, one extra screw, but it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Seven, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws of one length and three screws of another length. So more than likely, you're going to need five and you're going to need two, and they give you one extra of each length. That looks like a two millimeter hex head, and you've only got your two um, ball links to hook up. That's for the flaps. And they even give you, well, you know what? I guess we do have two different sizes of hex head. And they give you two different size Allen wrenches in there. So that tells me there's two different sizes. Okay, so that's that. Manual, which I'll have to set down and put my fat butt on. And that'll, that should flatten it right out. No problem. All right. And last but not least, the fuselage. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to pull out the fuselage. All right. Oh, man. Heavy. Heavy. It's heavy. Very heavy. They've even, got, uh, they've even laid another piece of that soft 
that, that right there in the bottom of this just to protect it. That's that's nice. These are these are touches uh, and a Vex fly. If you ever if I ever get fortunate enough for you to listen to my videos and pay attention to mine, that's a nice touch. That is a very nice touch. Little things like that a consumer will remember. Okay? There's the razor blade out of the way. Look at this fuselage. Fuselage. Is that not beautiful? Look at that thing. It's heavy. This is a heavy, heavy plane. All right, you've got the flap there, a hatch there. Look at this. Look at how much room. You've got, y'all know I've got big hands, okay? Look. Look at that. Plenty of room. Got the uh, XT90 connector. Now, I've told you many before, before when you've got an EC3 or an IC3, they will fit into an XT60 uh, input or battery connection off the, off the uh, ESC. The same holds true for an XT90 and an EC5 or an IC5. Okay? It works just the same. In fact, it's a very tight connection. Very tight. So you don't have to worry about it coming unplugged. All your... Oh, this is kind of cool. Apparently, there is a controller box that I can't see. Right here, in this little, there's a little white wooden box. This is not cardboard. This is a wooden box painted white or painted white. And uh, all your leads. Oh, this is so cool. Everything is labeled to hook to your receiver. Okay? And then I'm going to assume, you know, you're, only, you're probably going to be putting your battery further back. So your choices, because your strap's way back here. So more than likely, you're going to be putting your receiver somewhere right, right behind these wires are possibly on top of this little wooden box, um, provided that there's... No, no, I don't think there would be room. I think, unless you have a very thin receiver. I think it's meant to mount right there. The manual may uh, refer to that. But this is obviously your throttle, and then each one of these are labeled. Aileron, rudder, elevator, gear, and flap. So six channel plane, um, beautiful plane. It's going to be a very, very simple build. Um, nice, big, big, healthy uh, cheater here. So, uh, just, so just understand, when you've got a bottom cheater there, if you go on a grass field, if it's been freshly mowed, okay, which is nice because it's, it's low level grass, but all those clippings are going to get sucked up in there when you've got a bottom cheater. I would have much rather preferred if you got to have cheaters on top, but hey, I didn't design it. So, quick connects for your wings up here. Um, so this will be a very, very simple build. Um, all right. Um, you have one pilot. He is by himself, so no one will remember him when he dies. <laughs> That's kind of morbid, isn't it? Uh, another nice thing. You've got. You have holes here with little wooden cutouts so that you could add a second model or a second a second uh, pilot, just like this. And you got the one pilot there. And, but they're nicer. You got a hole here. Now you think, well, why would you need a hole? Well, there's two reasons for that. Number one, if you wanted to FPV this incredibly fast plane, which you got cojones to, if you do that. Um, but the other, the main reason for that is, is that gives you a little bit of breathing in here. That way, if you, you set this thing out in the sun, like you really shouldn't be sitting out in the sun for any length of time this plane, um, the foam in here won't gator so bad. When, when I mean gator, that means the cells of the foam expand and they become very definite and they look like gator skin or alligator skin or lizard skin, whatever you want to call it. But uh, very nice. Very nicely done. You've got yourself a Nice mechanism there for holding your battery hatch down. I love the colors of this plane. I really do. Big old beefy landing gear. Of course, I can't tell 
anything about them. I, I know they're shock absorbing. I know they have a wider stance than what you would think they do. Um, there you go. Um, you look here. If you look on these, okay, you've got your elevators, right? And you're going to put a screw through here. Well, they're going to slide. You've got these pins at the end of the tail, either side. These are simply going to slide onto here, okay? Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. All right. Look at how this is kind of has a contour shape. And then when I put this in here, uh, uh, in there, oh, it's so cool. It absolutely fits the contour of the plane. This, this, uh, <laughs> that's, that's neat. That's another little design that, that's, that's cool. All right. Well, there you go. Um, interesting mechanism here. For the, oh, I bet you this is that big heavy-duty servo. Look at that big, that big uh, circular. I don't know if you can see it the light. To make these uh, elevators go up and down, you've got this big beefy servo with a round disc uh, control arm on it. So that's probably that big, that big 13 gram servo we talked about. I think it was 13 gram. Well, anyways, there you go. We're gonna get her together. I mean, all you've got is your main fuselage. You got both of your pieces of your elevator here. You've got both wings that have quick connects. Two screws hold them in on either side. Okay. Then you've got your vertical rudder right there. And then, you know, optional, you can put the belly tank on, which that has that very, well, they're using a lot of these. Um, we just put it in the groove and slide, lock it into place, and that's and uh, that's what we use. You got your uh, Velcro there, and like I said, you got your two different sizes screws, and all you got to hook up is your uh, flaps. So this is a very simple build. I don't think I'm going to do a build video because I mean you're going to put your screw, you're going to put your wings, slide your wings on. Um, uh oh, I didn't pull the spar out. Where is the spar? There should be a spar. See? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. See? See? Always check your box. Big. This remind this spar here, I think this is a fiberglass spar. Very, ow. Very uh, beefy. That's going to slide through there. So that just means that there is a spar internal spars in here also that, that paint that is so th so thick I can't even see through the wing so it's got to have a spar in there yeah that, that stop has a stopping point so like I said you only got your two screws quick connect you're going to slide your elevators on two screws hold them in place you're going to key in your um, your uh, vertical stabilizer there is a connection back here for your rudder. Uh, remember, light to light, dark to dark. Lock that in place. And yeah, and then, then you're done. I mean, you got your wings on, you got your elevators on, you got your rudder on, and then put your little tank on. That's that's going to be real simple. I mean, you're going to key that in. You're going to have a screw back here. You're going to have a screw right here. Hold that in. Two screws hold on your elevator. Four screws hold on your wings and that's it so easy peasy lemon squeezy okay now remember one tip keep these little metal uh these little metal trays you get them i don't know how many you know, cheap you get them at uh like ace or you know ace hardware or you can get them and i like to separate my screws by size i'll pull all the screws off of the same size and if you put them in there, they'll stand up, same on their heads, you know, like, like, like that. And that way you have all the links on one side of the tray, and then all the other links on the other side of the tray. And uh, there you go. All right, we'll just, we'll just do that now. See, I've got all my long screws 
on one side and then my shorter screws on the other side and look I'm not going to lose any of these screws. None of these screws are going to get loose except for the loose screws in my head. So, where's the manual? Oh, what the heck? Let's go ahead and throw her together. What do you think? Think it's a good idea? Let's just go ahead. We'll just do a basic deal. You know what I mean? Let's just do it. Okay. That was very dramatic. Let's just do it. Okay. First, okay, you're going to take the uh, 20 millimeter screws, which I'm going to assume are the, yeah, because the other ones are 10. So you, yeah. And, and yeah, just like I thought, you're going to, you're going to have four of the long ones and then two of the short ones for the uh, elevator. So, and the wings are first. Boarding to the manual, wings are first. So, since they're right here, you got your obvious hole there. This is obviously this wing here. Got your quick connect right in there. Now, would you look at how that just sets into place beautifully like that. And I just set down two screws and the larger of the two Phillips or um, millimeter hex drives. I'm going to go in there. Put that right in there. Just use what came with out. I'm going to kind of push that in place and kind of put my finger in. I want to get that going. Hopefully this will go together easily for me. All right, because since I decided just to go ahead and put it together. And when you've got one that doesn't quite line up, you know, but the but one does, but the other, go ahead and install the one that does that lines up real well, like this back one does. Okay, because then you can use leverage. Okay, to get the other one. Think active as a pivot hinge, kind of. Just don't tighten it all the way down. You see, now I got now I know that one's secure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it out of the way, and I'm going to use my belly, my belly. Okay, I'm going to brace myself against here. I'm going to pull the wing, pushing the wing in towards the fuselage, to where I where that seam disappears. And now my screw should line up. It should just start to bite and you should feel it almost immediately. You know what? A regular one of these would be easier. So if that's the wrong that's the wrong size, man. I don't think I have one here handy. So yeah, it's starting to bite now. What I do with two screws. But like I said, you you know it's obvious when it starts to bite, you'll feel it. Pull that seam in. If I'm just screwing that now, you'll just have to trust me. The seam where the two, the wing half and the fuse uh, comes together, is just disappearing. It's just becoming. I mean, it's just becoming a looks like a black line that you can just see. Now this thing, okay, it has a very definite. And then I can go back and tighten that other one. It has a very definite bottoming out point. Okay, so that wing. You know, it's on there, but it's got a little bit of play to it. So, right, well, we will trust the manufacturer. Okay, so that's going to, you know, that kind of helps a little bit. Now the, the, the spar is going all the way. And see, that's not, and, and the thing about it is, it isn't just these parts going in. The entire the backing on here fits into the open place here. So that also kind of helps secure that in there. So let's, uh, I'm still filming? Okay, we're still filming. Okay. 
and I apologize, folks, if I don't look at the camera and if I get, you know, I get distracted with what I'm doing. I realize that people are watching me. I need to say hi once in a while, you know. And uh, this time and the front one. This would be my problem with my I have one of these flight tests, the 2.5 or 2.0 millimeter uh, hex drive. <laughs> and it keeps getting stripped out. So I mean I've used it for I've had it for years, so I'm not complaining about the quality of the tool. I just uh nope. that's a ball ink. These yeah, this has a very definite, basically when, it, when that screw bottoms out and becomes flush, that's it. That's as far as she's going to go. I'm going to push that in here a little bit. All right. Trying to get this thing to line up here. Oh, come on, baby. You can do it. Oh. Sometimes it was just a little piece of debris, a little bit of uh, foam, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of something in there that's causing it to not want to line up completely. And you just have to fight with it. You've got to remember, a tight-fitting plane usually is a good flying plane. All right, folks, I'm going to have to work on that for a little bit. Let me pause the video. You don't have to see me fighting with it. All right, we're back. Now, what I had to do to finally get all four of these screws in here, sorry about the haze on the top of the screen, is the, the inside foam of the wing, I just took my thumb and smashed it um, anywhere I could. And that kind of made a little bit tighter of a uh, joint and I took, just took my, my thing and I just kind of, kind of bent out that hole just a little bit. And she finally, once she started to bite, then that was it. The only problem is I had to keep grabbing this wing to pull it in tight. But that's okay. Like I said, a tight fitting model that's on there is a, is a good, going to be a good flying model. Or at least it should be. So that's that. Let's get our oversized plane stand out here. Okay, we're going to put on the uh, elevators. Now I'm going to turn this over. Now I want you to pay attention to something, and there's, I don't know if the camera's going to show this or not, but there are three small lines, or uh, well, they're supposed to be. Well, maybe there's not. Well, I'll show it to you when I can. Um, Turn the model over, okay? You know what? I bet you we need to put on our... Let's look at the instructions. How about that? I bet you we need to put the elevator... Nope, nope, we do. We put the elevator on next, and then we put on the uh, vertical stabilizer, otherwise known, formerly known as the rudder. Okay. All right. That beautiful bottom light right there. All right, now you're going to put the screw side down. In other words, when the model's upside down like this, this is when you're going to be able to see it. And you, it's obvious where the holes, there's holes there, holes there. So obvious where it gets plugged in at. And they should, sorry if my head's in the way, but that should, let me show you. Try to pick this model up. Um, you see, there's holes in the end of that then the, the what holds on to your elevator and then there's the holes there and then that those two holes are going to line up and that's where you're going to drop your 10 millimeter um, screw and it's going to screw right into there so that screw 
is what's going to secure it together. So, so I should see a nice, should come up suspiciously close to a hole. Yep, yep, there's the hole. Now that should drop right like that. See, it went right to that magnetic tray. That may, and, and it just kills me how that is just, per, the elevator is just perfectly contoured for the side of the uh, fuselage. Okay, so I'll get it going with my finger there. This might be small enough for that. And it is. I have a side use and the included Allen wrench is just a little too fiddly for me. And that obviously bottoms out. Okay. Find your other one. Okay, I stole, someone stole my elevator. Okay, here it is. I know it's here somewhere. We have a mystery. We have a mystery. Okay, so I'm going to take the little 10 millimeter. That's the shorter of the two screws. Get that going. Take, now, I could use the included Allen wrench, but instead I'm going to use a tool. Just easier. And then you'll feel it when it touches the... Uh, the vertical or the horizontal stabilizer. I don't know what's that. Spar, beam, uh, axle. Probably be good. See, look. Now the whole thing's moving. Okay, I got it's not a good idea to dry, to dry move the servos if you can handle it, if you can help it. Better electronically, because you're kind of pushing them against their ear. All right, now, let's find our horizontal. Okay, should find a lead in here. This is another time where I suggest you get tools like this. They're like little dentist tools, but you get them in the hardware. They got little, you know, because see the nice thing, see how that's kind of curved? You can go in there and hook something or, or grab something, you know? Just great. And they're, they're I think they're called crafting. More than likely, you're going to see this little red and, and red, black, and yellow wire. And that should, one of them ends, has to be it. Got a 50-50 chance on which one it is. Ah, there it is. See, and it's got these two little clamps. You'll see they clamp. Now, you've got yellow, and you've got red. You got black. Okay. You're always going to hook things up, light to light, dark to dark. If you're ever curious about servos, light to light, dark to dark. Okay, and then that hooks up with the two the, the two more of your 20 millimeter. All right, so I was correct. You're going to use two 20 millimeters, the longer screws to hold on your vertical, two 10 millimeter screws, the short little ones to hold on your elevator, and four longer 20 millimeter screws to hold on your wing. Okay, and that will leave you one 20 millimeter screw and one 10 millimeter screw left over. As I predicted, one of each. XFly took a page out of FMS. Now, y'all are going to watch this video. I have heard the rumor that a key model developer designer used to work that used to work for for FMS left there and became started his own XFly model companies. He wanted to make it his way, and I'm seeing a lot of FMS. And trust me, this is not made by FMS. This is made by XY. They're their own company. But I'm seeing a lot of FMS stuff or way of doing things in these XY models. Okay, like I said, you got a white. Even though my servo wire coming off of my rudder is white, red, and black, and my lead going to my, um, to, it's going to end up going to my, ES, or my receiver is yellow, red, and brown, that doesn't matter. I'm going to put my lightest 
lightest wires together. So white to yellow, red to red, and black to brown. So light to light, dark to dark, always. Okay, now the fine adjustment for the elevator can be accomplished. There is a, a adjustable screw head that you take a probably, let's see, let me grab the two. You can see it. You're going to take the smaller of the two. If you need to adjust this mechanically, adjust your elevator mechanically at the servo arm, you're going to take the smaller of the two and there's an adjustment. You can loosen it and adjust it that way if you don't want to uh, electronically adjust it. Because I'm pretty much neutral there. At least I think I am. Now, normally I'd have this thing already bound up and everything and then set new. But these X-Fly models and FMS and, and E-Fly, they're almost always Almost all the servos are always neutral. Everything's all, everything already neutral. Okay, so I'm going to take two, and, and you're going to put them on this side. On the other side, there's just should be just be a yeah, just a flat hole. But on this side, there's a recess where the head of these will will slide right in. Okay, so like I did before, let's put. Get right here in the front, and I can use it as a pivot point to pull that back one down. And, and folks, this this is this is not it, putting this mall together is honestly no harder. Just you know, physically putting the physical frame together is no harder than putting a light bulb in. Okay, you're just screwing things in. All right, just put some screws together. You're just putting them in the right order. Okay. Then me having to be kind of fiddly with the uh, the one wing. This beautiful thing, this beautiful jet is now. Oh wait wait we gotta do the flaps. Gotta do the flaps. We gotta hook up the flaps. All right. For that, we are going to have to do that in the radio setup. Okay. Oh one thing I can do because. I gotta make sure I gotta hook them flaps up. Everything's gotta be new. I'm gonna go ahead and you're gonna see two slots right in between the middle of that cheater. And that should let me show you. If you look right there, see them two uh, keys and look at that. That's just gonna right there and just slide towards the rear of the model. Should anyway. You may have to, or maybe it goes this way. Yeah, okay. That makes more sense. So the more narrower end goes towards the front of the plane, and then it, the thicker end goes towards the rear. That kind of makes sense. That's a that's a uh, exterior or an extra fuel tank. I probably won't fly with that, and let me tell you why. Because you're losing a little bit of your cheater. But I'm going to leave it on for right now. Um, there are some things in the model that I'm not happy about, like they're, they didn't complete the, the, the spray, or a little bit of overspray, or underspray really around here, like they marred this up, putting this in here. There's a few, even in their online X-Fly production video putting it together, there's some crinkle marks here, here and there, but you know, you're, number one, you're never going to see it in the air. And you probably won't see it until you pick it, pick the model up and look at it really close. You know, we could go ahead. You know, I, I know I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth. But both of those servos appear, the flap servos, appear to be in the same position. So let's just go ahead, just so I can say the model's complete, we'll go ahead and, and hook up the flaps. It'll be easier for you to see I do it over here. I'm not using this, this model stand the way I should, I know. All right. This, and I don't know if you hook this to the inside or the outside, but it probably doesn't matter. And what I'm talking about, the inside-outside, 
is, uh, oh yes, there is a wing, wing board connection diagram, but of course it's already been done for you. The CG on this plane, in my folded up manual, is 155, so basically almost dead center of the fuselage. All right, the L-shaped or Z-bend side is going to hook into the, uh, which hole on the servo arm? Okay, here's hole installation for flap is going to go. They've already got the ball link set for your ball link in. And it's going to go the second hole in from the end on the servo arm of your flap servo. Okay? So, and I guess it doesn't matter if you go on the inside or the outside. Now you might have, have to kind of wiggle it in there and let it okay and look yeah for that to be like that it's going to have to have to screw that in a little bit in order for it to fit yeah. a little bit more Yeah, this is a good time. This is a good tool to have for flaps. You're going to do a lot of flaps. It is a ball link tool. Very unique looking. But what it does, it grabs both sides of your flap and or your flap connection. Just makes things look, it makes your life a little bit easier. If you can get this. There you go. There. Okay, that flap is nice. It's in the up position and show you that flap. See how it's nice and level with the fuselage right there? It's pretty, pretty level. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one the same way. Okay. Get on this side of the model. <laughs> oh. One of these days, which it'll probably never happen, but I'm talking a big game, I'm actually going to straighten this main cave up. Remember, I'm putting this in the second hole of the servo arm. Okay, and it's going to have to go in a little bit. It's better for it to go in than have to go out because you don't want to, you want to have a nice, strong connection in your servo arm. This is this one's tight, and all I'm doing is this ball link is on a screw. Okay, it screws in and out for adjustment. I'm making it shorter, so I'm screwing it to the right. And sometimes it's uh, this one. This particular one is very very tight. But it's plenty of room for adjustment. Tool that I made such a big deal about. Okay, there we go. All 
right, folks, got the flaps in, and I don't know if you can see down the end of that. Look up in there. Maybe you can see the. fan up in there. All right. There you go. Ah. <laughs> Is that not one beautiful, beautiful jet? I think, I think that's going to fly beautifully. It looks great. And if it looks great, it's going to fly great, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, some of the stickers are kind of coming up, but that's moisture and time and heat. That happens. All right, folks. Well, that's the basic build. Um, we're going to do. I'll uh, do a radio setup, or basically, I'll set it up, put my radio in it, and then I'll show you, go over what I did, my rates, and all that. Um, rates in a book, you know. But, but anyways, I'll put it together, put the re receiver in there, get her bound up, get her powered on, and then I can go over, show you the different features on the plane. Um, Soft, S-O-F-T, uh, Productions. He does a lot of the videos for uh, X-Fly and Banana Hobby. And uh, he does a great setup video on this. And um, I'll put a link to that video in the description of my build. And I'm going to use his rates. And uh, I, I've seen a lot of, fly a lot of his jets. And I trust his judgment. So I'm going to, I say I'm going to use his, you know, I'm talking on both sides of my mouth. I know. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to use the manual as a guide, and he suggests the same thing. You you want to use your manual as your guide, as your starting point, and then based upon how you fly, where you really put your batteries. Your batteries may weigh more than other people's batteries, so you kind of have to adjust that to yourself. But the the manual is always the best starting for uh, starting point for um, uh, aileron, dual rates, uh, CG, all that kind of stuff. That's always the best story for So, all right, folks, well, there you go. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Fat Guy Flies RC, and that is the X Fly Alpha Jet, the uh, French aero, I can't say it, they're the French uh, aerobatic team, kind of like the Thunderbirds or our Blue Angels. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, fake family and friends, and have planes. Bye bye. I have to turn it off here. Hey, I'm back. Real quick, discover something. Let me uh, let me show it to you. Remember, I was talking about how the elevator has to be lined up at a certain point. All right. Well, I found them. If you look back there on the butt in there, okay, you're going to see. You can kind of see the light. There's three little like like would be bolts going down the front of this fake. This line here, there's three of them. Well, the very bottom one is right where that elevator touches. That's where you want the elevator. And it's that way on, on both sides. And that's exactly where, uh, when I screwed them in, that's exactly where it's set. So it should be, you'll see three little notches, three little, uh, it would, if this was a real jet, this would be like a, a maintenance panel and you can unscrew it and take it off. Well, those three screws, that bottom screw is where this is supposed to, the elevator is supposed to line up. Found them, just want to share that. Okay, I'm going this time, I swear I am.